Guys, the storm did not take me away. I am still here. And um, yeah, we are going to talk about, actually, we're going to talk about the, uh, the HBO special again. Okay, we're going to talk about the HBO special again. But this time, this time, I've brought on friend and fellow Bitcoiner and Bitcoin puppet. I've brought Yellow onto the show to discuss this um, because the, I, I think that there's possibly a misunderstanding um, as to what the overall messaging could start to look like um, as uh, essentially the the rumors or the story starts to unfold from that HBO special and the supposition that quote unquote Peter Todd is Satoshi. So. Without further ado, thank you very much. What's up? Yeah, man. Thank I'm, you for joining I'm, me on I, the show. I'm glad you're uh, safe. Thank you. Thank you. Me too. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> hey, you know how it goes, man. It's all about luck, right? It's yeah. either we get hit or we don't. Very lucky. No flooding. No nothing. But uh, and and I'm super grateful for that. You know, didn't lose power. Did no you, flooding. Did you also have a boat like Lieutenant Dan? Uh, no, no, I, I don't have a okay. boat. I, I anyway. don't have a boat. But uh, yeah, Lieutenant Dan, uh, kind of down bad, huh? Kind of. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people were so happy uh, about Lieutenant Dan, and uh, then they started doing the research. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Dan ain't that damn that good. Did, that didn't turn out the way they thought. Anyways, yeah. anyways. Okay, so look. So yesterday, let's let's give some people some context, right? Um, the HBO special, yeah. Money Electric, uh, came out, and... Um, I think for the most part, Bitcoiners, uh, I could say for myself, uh, obviously was a you know, giant nothing burger, kind of disappointing. Did a, a video about it yesterday. But yesterday in the Good Morning uh, Bitcoin space, and I actually discussed this in yesterday's clip, which is why it's super cool to, to have you on the show today. Um, essentially, essentially, you made a supposition, okay, that um, that this is part of a possibly growing new satoshi narrative so i don't know if we um if we want to start diving into that right away yeah my um as everyone else uh, i skipped through the documentary i stayed for the Philip uh, parts more and what i understood from the whole uh six of uh, the hbo special was uh i got that um yesterday a new cycle of incoming fad has just uh, been born basically and we, we will be seeing it down the line okay so let's let's talk about this um this new cycle of fad but before we do um I, I think that we i think maybe we need to give some people uh some context right about uh the block size wars uh because this does matter um, it does make a difference because to your point, right, um, Peter Todd's uh, narrative is the support for tail emissions. Now, tail emissions could look in many different ways, but mm -hmm. you and I, I think, can both agree that tail emissions means removing a hard cap. Exactly. I don't see how else in the you end, can do that. However you want to spin it, yeah. uh, whatever justification you want to give it, you're removing the the hard cap of 21 million and and i think i mean you and i both agree that once that if that hard cap is removed you know wtf are we doing here i mean there's it's there's that, no point it's, anymore it's it's 21 million or death exactly exactly and it's just like the angry chihuahua says right it's 20 million over everything right 21 million over everything and um just to yeah. go back uh, essentially to the block size war so uh essentially right uh back in uh, what was it uh 2017 2018 hold on let me uh, let me pull this up over here uh 2015 and 2017 okay uh so there was a growing debate over the um the size of the blocks and there was this um this overarching narrative that somehow bitcoin was doomed right if we didn't increase this uh this block size and essentially what happened during that time okay was that um a bunch of at the time powerful people in the space all came together 
and started to support this block size increase. And from what it seemed like was just a few smaller Bitcoin businesses and mostly plebs that said, wait a minute, what is going on here? You know, what is happening? And I just want to give people uh, some reference because I, I think that people fail to appreciate the the players that were involved in the block size uh, in the block size war and the ones that were for this block size increase, which to make it easy for people, the block size increase would help increase centralization and essentially get us to the point where Bitcoin just becomes rails for giant trusted third parties. So here we go. OK, we've got the uh, we, we've got this little chunk of information here from from uh, bitbo.io. And here we could see who was in favor of the New York agreement. Right. And the New York agreement was all of these uh, companies and people that came together in order to force through the increase in Bitcoin's block size. Now, take a look at some of these names. Right. Bitmain, Coinbase. Oh, look, Zappo Bank who just became absolutely huge this cycle and wants to custody your Bitcoin and give you some of those sweet returns, right? For hanging on to your corn, okay? Anyways, Circle, BitGo. Oh, look, Wences Casares. Isn't he the president of Zappo Bank? Hmm, interesting, very interesting. Jihan Wu, Roger Ver, Jeff Garzik, and, and, and and there's a whole bunch of others. There was also Meltem Demirers as well, and and a few other big influencers. So, you know, yeah, the, the let's say the majority of the business side of Bitcoin was in favor of the New York ag agreement. So, Yellow, you were you were there back then. And before we kind of talk about what's happening now, um, what was what was your feeling back then? Do you remember what? Um, you know, kind of what your impression was as this was taking place? Well, uh, we talked about it, but like mm -hmm. I, I still remember that night where uh, their play on the on the attack vector of the price like was happening. Bitcoin cash was uh, rising and rising and uh, Bitcoin or let's say was dropping. At some point, I think uh, Bitcoin cash even reached like 2.2K something crazy and and that had to do obviously with the with the uh, mining rate like um wh where the miners were pointing right That's in right. which chain and uh it was a crazy night like whoever says that obviously i'm saying what i'm saying as being a newbie back then i i wasn't i, I didn't know that much I don't know now that much, but I know a little bit better. I know, you know, I'm trying. We're working <laughs> but, on it. Uh, as a newbie, like coming into Bitcoin Twitter and watching all the the craziness happened, that's what they they wanted. You you they wanted the newbies to don't know what is happening, and that's what they were betting. It was it was a bet all in in one night. And thank God there were people more more smarter and uh, and more trustworthy and with some kind of integrity, mostly plebs, that really calmed us down and said, you know, guys, chill. It's just an attack. They cannot do shit. Yeah, v very well said. And uh, to your point, I was also I was a noob. Um, I had come to Bitcoin in 2015 for medium of exchange. I really didn't understand anything about this. And then all of a sudden I start hearing about this, you know, Bitcoin cash and, you know, Roger Ver. Um, and it, in all fairness, I didn't know what to think. And that made me start to question what was the real, the real Bitcoin, right? And I remember to your point when not only did Bitcoin cash's price go higher than Bitcoin's, but so did the hash rate, okay? And I have to admit at that time, because I didn't have the conviction and I didn't have, I, I didn't do nearly the amount of research that I've done by this point, I was scared. Um, I was scared that I didn't understand what was going on, right? And by actually having Bitcoin, uh, I thought that I was making a mistake, right? Because essentially what happened was, was that this narrative 
of these bigger blocks that would somehow facilitate all of these cheaper payments, right? What were we sacrificing back then? Back then we were sacrificing centralization and what else? I'm trying to remember. Sorry, we were sacrificing decentralization, not centralization. We were sacrificing decentralization. Technically, that's what would have happened, right? In order to get these, in, in order to get these bigger blocks, which supposedly were going to equal the ability to have cheaper and cheaper payments. And why would we have these cheaper and cheaper payments? Right? It was supposedly because of the big blocks, but really what was going to happen was the increased centralization. So we would again end up in the same position we are today with broken money yeah it was a it was a weird period where every coin was um, trying to up one another by being faster and faster like now it doesn't make any sense that's right and and it's been proven that it doesn't work right those narratives clearly don't work here we are almost 10 years later right we're in 2024 and be cash didn't win all right it, it's yeah. just a fart in the wind now, we're going to fast forward to today. We're done with the history lesson, okay? <laughs> we're going to fast forward to today. Now, the HBO special, right? The HBO special that supposed that that Peter Todd is Satoshi. And um, initially, when we started this vid, right, you explained about the possible narrative shift. Here's a tweet. Here's a tweet from you, Yellow. Their newest narrative has begun. A new cycle of fresh FUD is incoming. Okay, take a look at that. The protocol. Peter Todd wants to fix Satoshi's Bitcoin bugs. A and I'm not going to lie. This seems like right on cue, doesn't it? Yeah. It was uh, not nearly like 24 hours I made a Photoshop version of an article from them. Let's say uh, I, it was quoted that it, it quoted that we... Uh, that was the quote anyway that was saying like basically Peter Todd uh, uh, is not against inflation, the possible possible Satoshi, right? So I just want everybody to do this thought experiment and not only thought experiment, actual experiment, to be honest. Like go now to your Google and Google Peter Todd's name. All of a sudden, you will see a bunch of articles uh, with question marks also always, Peter Tad Satoshi. Then uh, the 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 thing that I, all, I also include in my Photoshop, uh, Peter Todd denying being Satoshi, right? But that doesn't stop them by making a fusion of an article and saying basically potential Peter Peter potential Satoshi is in, wants to fix a bug on Bitcoin or that narrative is starting. Yeah, that narrative is starting, and we're gonna see it very soon. I feel, maybe months, maybe a year, but that discussion will be made for a subject and a problem that is down the line in twenty one forty. Like that problem, we're gonna have that problem in like a hundred plus years, and for somehow we have to discuss it now and solve it now. Like why? The to your point. The real question is, will we actually have that problem, right? We don't actually know that we're going to have that issue in 2140. We don't actually know that we need tail emissions. We don't know this. It's, yeah, exactly. it's all just, uh, to your point, right? This is all just FUD. And, and this is kind of what happens again and again. And guys, uh, you know, you hear me say this in, in a lot of my clips, right? Whenever you are being pushed to make a time sensitive decision, you need to understand why. Why does this person, why does this group, why do these people expect me to make a time sensitive decision? Why do they need my answer now? And it's usually not for your benefit. Exactly. On that uh, subject, on the time-sensitive uh, perspective of it, like, they they even saying uh, now that, oh, no, we don't have to wait until then. We can implement this even sooner, you know? Like, even with, with very small block rewards, let's give them a, a bonus so they can secure the network 
as uh, they deserve, I guess. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I thought they were already securing the network uh, as yeah. they. Th I don't know. I don't know. So, but you know what that sounds like, right? You know what that sounds like? That sounds like um, the like a metaphorical um, morphine drip, right? You you kind of you get the person used to having this thing, you know. Look, you're getting this extra all the time. So then all of a sudden, they, at some point, they feel as though they can't live without it. So feel, that I could be like, why. Like, I feel like that that's one play that they're trying to do. And mm -hmm. the other play they're trying to do is the thing James the, the, uh, Jamie Diamond said. How do you know? He said in the summer of... Um, uh, in in Sw the Swiss summit, summit they were dealing yeah. with the bunkers. I think it was a WEF summit. And he said it clearly, how do you know it's going to stay 21 million? And jokingly, he said, Satoshi tomorrow can come and whoopsie doozy, like, change that with a call. How do you know? Right? So yeah. it's very difficult to for them to implement it. I'm not saying that. But from a narrative perspective, they can attack it by having an article. Like, put yourself in the in the shoes of a boomer holding, thinking of buying Bitcoin or a mm -hmm. newbie. He goes to Google and he searches Satoshi, he searches Bitcoin, how it started and all that. He founds Peter Dodd's name and then he finds what emissions, uh, the tail emissions are. And basically, tail emissions is the, uh, like uh, stopping, uh, like upping the 21 million cap. Like there is no cap anymore. And then he finds James Di uh, James Diamond's uh, interview saying, how do you know Satoshi doesn't come? And, uh, you know, like the whole narrative is ready for them to attack it in the, in, in the absolute way they can. In the end, 21 million is the last line in the sand. I, I totally that's agree. A way of attacking it. I I agree. So okay. So before before we uh, before we wrap this up, I guess the end result of all of this, right? Is this the the bankers fork? Because I, I know that in the space that we were talking about this morning, right? Which I, you know, Wicked, right? The uh, the, the Apple, right? He, you know, he, he was sitting there saying, well, you can't do any of this without a hard fork. I mean, we get that, right? But that doesn't make it okay. You know, I mean, people are going, people in organizations are going to hard fork, right? They they are going to, there's no, there's no question to that. But that doesn't mean that this is not somehow um, an attack on Bitcoin, right? Just because there's a hard fork, it doesn't mean it's not an attack on Bitcoin. Those two things are not mutually exclusive, right? They can both exist together in the same timeline. And I agree. I, I right? agree with Wicked, but me, Wicked, you, and some listeners now uh, also know that the thing is that we are talking as they are talking to a to a target group as we were back then in that night. Yes. That's what, who I'm talking to right now. I'm not talking to you or Wicked or whoever. I'm talking to that guy. Because right. they're going to thrive in that confusion and they're going to take advantage of that guy like as we had in that night back in the four quarters. Exactly. So I'm trying to ring a bell to have it in mind that it is coming and recognize it as it is. It's just fad. Very well said. Absolutely very well said. Um, and guys, th this is all part of the then they fight you stage. Um, it, it really is. And and to Yellow's point, right, there, there's going to be, a, there's more noobs coming to the space. A lot of these noobs are orange pilled through NGU, not through medium of exchange. Okay. So the prospect of a faster, a faster increasing NGU through this type of stuff can can easily sway people in the wrong direction. So everybody is better served by understanding um, understanding Bitcoin's core qualities. But 
I, I think you know what? Um, one thing I want to add is I think everyone should should read Everyone's a Scammer from from Bitstein. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm gonna put that in the show notes. I I constantly harp on this, but this is like another perfect example of Everyone's a Scammer. Okay, before we wrap up, Yellow, any uh, any final thoughts? No, just um, um, be vigilant and um, keep on stacking, keep what you're doing and uh, have a curious mind and ask questions. And uh, also um, have a laugh. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this Pleb Underground Daily Bit. I will catch you all next week. Next week.